All right. So we're rocketing ahead. We're right on schedule. It's 7 30. Dave oh, Eisenthal's been standing in the hallway for a while. Is he here tonight? For uh, he's here to talk a little bit about the, uh, the various options we have for the SRF funding for Route 9 water lines as well as the uh, technicalities associated with the now two articles for land purchases that are on your okay. So let's take care of the... Yeah. Well, wait a minute, and then we still didn't finish the... Yeah, we we have, did halfway like through this. the RFPs. Yeah, we have an appointment. We have an appointment. Oh, you have an appointment, okay. Yes. So let's take our 7.30 appointment now at 8.30. All right. What would you like to know? <laughs> so this is the public safety budget discussion. Hit us with it. Um, do you do you want just highlights? Would you like to go line by line, or how would you like to do this? Highlights. highlights. A lot longer than. Yeah. You're going to do the public safety. I'm going to do. The I mean, you're going to do the. Uh, Finance Committee yeah. in March. Yeah. Not that we don't have. I'll sit in front. Yeah. Okay. I think we kind of used up our yellow. So, I think everyone here is fairly clear on the direction that we'd like to. Uh, <coughs> Bring the police and the communications department. I'm going to talk about those two budgets. Obviously, I'm going to do the fire. Um, what I'll do is I'll just talk about the ones that have major changes. Everything else, I mean, you have all the numbers in front of you. There may be some adjustments made, but it's not going to be anything worth shattering. Very simply put, what we're looking to do is I've, as, at the board's request, I've submitted essentially two separate budgets. One of them is a level service budget, and the other one is an expanded service budget. The test that we did in the summertime uh, gave us an idea of what hiring three new full-time police officers would do for us as far as the overtime goes. The uh, police officers are on board with making some reductions in their overtime and changing their contracts significantly uh, in exchange to be placed at different spots on the pay scale uh, for uh, some better money, uh, as well as being on board with the additional officers. They're willing to work with us to obviously reduce this beast of, uh, of an overtime that we have, we have issues with. We have <coughs> made some significant policy adjustments, as I said when I gave when I did the slideshow presentation, as well as how we fill shifts um, to reduce the overtime fairly significantly. Um, not to get too much into what's happening right now, I know you want to hear about the future, but over the last three fiscal years, according to our VADAR numbers, we have spent over, you know, I think the average, it's 164, 164,000, 180,000, 165,000. That averages around 167, $168,000 in overtime. Barring some major issues as far as the overtime goes, and we still have the, you know, the Blarney blowout coming up and things like that, we have made a significant reduction in those numbers. This same time last year, we were $19,000 in the hole in our overtime already. We currently have still over $20,000 left in, in that line. So we've, we're looking at about a $40,000 savings so far, or reduction at least, I should say. Um, so we're working towards it. Unfortunately, short of violating the contract, we are essentially, we've essentially done what we can do um, without looking to hire more personnel. I think it should be noted that what overtime is essentially is paying someone time and a half, that extra four hours that you're paying them for an eight hour shift, you're getting nothing for it. Um, you're paying them to go home. 
essentially. So what you have in front of you is a couple of different numbers. We have a level service request as far as full-time wages go. Um, that is the level service request essentially covers all of the contract agreements, longevity and all the other things that were added into the contract. The expanded version of that is all of those things plus three additional officers. Now, the reason that we, as I, sh as I told you without beating a dead horse, as I told you during the presentation, we're taking a lot of the money from the part-time line because we've made significant adjustments to the contract so that we don't have to fill certain shifts to fund that, those extra positions. So part-time's going from approximately 118 to 58? Correct. Okay. Correct. And that 58 that's left in there uh, is to continue to staff the extra shifts that we need during busy times. And to provide during the training period for the first year while these people are at the academy. Every place, every place that we would normally use full-time officers without violating the contract is what that money is okay. for. Um, the overtime we already touched on. The test project that we did showed a 25 to 30 percent reduction in the amount of overtime spending by adding those extra officers, and you're getting more bang for your buck. And on top of that, let's be honest: the town's not getting any quieter. Okay, with all the stuff going on, we are pushing to a, to a point where we need more officers on the road. Mike, originally when you became chief, we had spoke about the specials and the part time. And you still don't have enough of specials and part-timers. The amount of people that you're hiring and the amount of people that, because of their other duties, are walking out, really, essentially. And we, were, we wanted you to try to get as many specials and part-times on to take this salary, this overtime salary, and bring it down. Right. And right now, the fifty-eight thousand you're going down to part-time and specials, you're going up almost one hundred and twenty with three new officers. Right. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, just to explain that, uh, we have four new people right now being trained. We have no more field training officers to train them. So the four. No, people I understand. It takes time. And on top of that, but we you can't just take a part-timer yeah. and fill a full-time shift. It's yeah. a violation of the contract. Yeah. So we can only do so much with those part-timers. If we had a hundred of them, we can only use them so much. We are at a point right now with the changes that we've made with how we schedule things. The part-time shifts that were going back to overtime are being filled by all part-time and special now. It's getting to the point where the specials at the bottom of the ladder aren't even getting hours per month because they're getting sucked up by the people above them. That's better than well, going okay. through the whole list and nobody taking it, which is what the, the problem we were having before, and then it goes back to overtime and it's 30 bucks an hour. So the hiring of more people doesn't change anything if you don't have a place to put them. See, or, yeah, originally when we started this, you didn't have a big enough pool to start with. So Correct. You so do, hired so you do have a big enough pool right now at this point right. to work from. Diane. Um, so overtime training, that there's an increase there, but that is to cover uh, the three additional officers if they're approved. Um, that's, you know, it, it's not... But it's not a ton of money. It's it's essentially we're do, we're actually doing very good on that. We are we're actually spending we're we're spending the line to pay for the training classes quicker than we are the overtime line, which is a good thing. In truth, next year it'll be even lower though, because the training will have occurred for the no, people that's going to the every year. to the people that's, going yeah, to the academy. Every year. This, this is, is ongoing every, year. every okay. year. This is stuff that I just came from. We had uh, legal updates classes. It's, it's 40 hours of, I'm sorry, 27 hours of in-service training every single year on the job training for every single officer we have. This is the overtime that covers that. Okay. So what's the total difference between the requested and the presented? 
for level or so you're yeah so let's say you're saying for level services if that's the budget we tell you you're going to get yep you need ninety thousand one hundred ninety dollars additional uh, I think it's eighty three three ninety okay and Done. that's taking into consideration the fact that even though we may have you know we're looking on a significant cut in the overtime we're still going to overrun that line I think we can cover it short of having to go to the town meeting like we've done the last three years because of the amount we've reduced it but um, so, so then what you're saying next is if you expand like we've been talking about for the last few months your budget increase would only be forty eight thousand dollars and that's what you correct and that's the first year because there are actually things that are in that enhanced uh, budget that are a one-year thing. My academy. My exactly. Yes. yes. <laughs> so um, that, that, that includes the expansion. That includes the police officers agreeing to the changes in the contract, which yeah. we've proposed, and they're discussing still. No, we're done. Uh, yeah. we're ready tonight. I don't know if I can officially say it, but I was told today that they voted unanimously to pass it today. Okay. okay. I know. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. I don't know if their union guys are going to come after me for saying it, but that's uh, what I was told. So I know it sounds strange that it would essentially cost more to continue the way we are, but that was the problem plan that I showed you. Right. Yes, and that was the problem we always knew yeah. because the contract holds you in. So exactly. by doing the expansion, we actually can save some money over okay. maintaining okay. level services. Well, I, I think it's back and forth because the more people you have, the more people you have to take that over that are on regular shifts so you're actually not going to be using the specials and the part-times as much but there's some management plan uh, yeah, well there's I mean, some can. yeah I mean honestly the, the problem is this make no mistake 10 months of me being the chief if I'm being completely blunt and honest is absolutely not enough time for me to tell you what the overtime is going to be. This is my first and best attempt, I believe, at, as I said, taming the beast. So that number that's there, I can tell you with fair amount of accuracy, the amount of shifts that we're, we could give out in overtime, it'll probably be a 30% reduction in what we've been giving out. But with the increases in rates of pay and things like that and all the other things that were, we, we did in the contract, the number itself is going to change. It's going to it's going to rise, obviously. And you make a good point, John. I'm not. I'm, not, I'm certainly not. Uh, I well, I know. I've been I've saying, been looking at it for right. three years now, and I haven't seen any major changes. And adding three people in my <coughs> mind right now is really not progress ahead on level service in this budget right now. Well, level servicing the budget is essentially doing the I'm same not, thing. I, been I doing. know. I know. Beating I, your head against a that. brick wall. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No and I get what you're saying, but and, and I think, I we think made we're thinking the attempt of, on the small side with the, with the specials and the part timers, yeah. and the, the full timers agreeing to use the specials and the part timers. So everybody was kind of working together a little bit to make a little bit of progress, but we just haven't got that far yet. You know, is there like a forty thousand dollar reduction yeah, in the overtime? Yeah, yeah, we'll take it. Jump. Pretty good start. We'll take it. <laughs> okay. Is there any other questions about the budget and what he's presented so far? No. No. Anything else you want to say about it? Yeah, I don't want to go line by line. Yeah. I know we've been no, talking about we don't this, want you to go line by line. The communication budget. Um, you want me to you, you need to hit talk the about highlights? It? Just yeah, highlights. essentially the same thing. There really is not a lot of changes, except for the contractual uh, things that we did as far as salary increases, uh, longevity, and things like that. The one. If there's more training in dispatch too, isn't there? No. There is and training. It's ongoing, like like the police. Yeah, it, it's it is it is. But we all we do have the advantage of uh, Mike and I have been working together to try to wrap our head. I mean, this is my first year dealing with it, but we have 911 grants out there that we are involved in, which saves us a ton of money on the training. But there are things. The reason that this the amount of training as far as this budget goes for salaries is really for things outside of that. And it's it's really not that much. Um, so the majority of the cost of our training comes through grants. So we save money that way. 
Uh, so I guess what I would say is, is you know, again, just, just as with the police, this, it's the salaries, full-time, part-time salaries, and the way that we utilize these people are being changed. We're changing them as much as we can to try to get the most bang for our buck and reduce overtime where we can. This this overtime line, this $20,000, this doesn't cover technically by number what they could possibly make should they take every open shift. Right. But the reason that it, it's okay, I'm okay with this number is, is simply because of how we've altered the way we give the shifts out. Not as big of a, a concern to me. I, we're not mm -hmm. going to hit the number. We're just not. So, um, you know, like I said, I, I need a little bit more time with that one as well. But and again, you've got, got a you've got a pool of part-time people where you don't have to bring an officer in. Correct. We've done the same. I mean, we, we have we have people working dual roles right now. We have uh, some of our special officers who are working as dispatchers. They were hired as dispatchers, and then we hired them as cops, and then others that we hired as cops who are doing dual roles as dispatchers. So, um, and that's really it. I mean, the rest of it, the most, the majority of the um, of the uh, communications budget is building expenses as well, electricity, um, and all the other. You can gas. I go back to the gas line for a second, please? I, I mean, gas is half of what we were paying last year for gas. And has the bid come out yet for the state? The no, it should come out next month. Do we not anticipate gas to be half as much as it was last year? I believe so. So we can adjust that. So yeah. there may be an, a flexibility Absolutely. in adjusting that. Absolutely. Number. And, and, and uh, that was one of the things I actually did speak with David about that. And he, he told me almost in exactly those words that we may want to revisit that one. I see it's um, less, but. I, I did, you know, I talked to Mike about it. He knows more about the boiler replacement than I do. I, it makes me a little nervous, to be quite honest with you, because I, I'd like to get through a winter cycle with those new boilers yeah. and see. Um, yep. But, you know, with costs decreasing and things like that, we can certainly make those adjustments. Yeah, it was only a month or two when they installed them last year, so you don't have a full season on them. Correct. Okay. It's the same with, honestly, it's the same with the fuel, our fuel um, gasoline uh, line for the police. We have made significant adjustments in how we handle the, the gas for the cruisers. And um, I anticipate being able to reduce that, not only because of the cost of gasoline, Going down, but the also because the efficiency, efficiency. efficiency of the new vehicles <coughs> have got to double the mileage. Absolutely, easily. shutting them off in, in certain situations when they can be shut off, things like that. None of that <coughs> was ever addressed. These are things that you know. I, I Do you know how many years in a row I had to suffer through conversations about the police cruiser idle time? Yeah. So. We I, have, know, I know, I know. <laughs> at one we point, talked about with the timers, putting timers on the cars. At one point, when I was the mechanic, we had hour meters under the hood, so we knew how many hours yeah. were on it compared to mileage for yeah. oil changes. And, and, and they used that as a stat for a while. Yeah, and we, we, okay. could, we have addressed that. That was one of the first things that I did on probably two weeks in. Uh, we are seeing significant reductions in the spending in that line, and I anticipate even more, but just like the boiler, I really would like to get through a winter cycle just to make sure because well, you know, this really isn't a winter cycle. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever winter is it's anymore. It's true. Colder right? than July. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? None. None. No. No, that's okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, animal control charge. How come it's no charge this year and last year was two fifty? Animal control. I think that's expenses. Was no, did we not no spend change. it? So you decided. No Okay, you know, I'm sorry. Keep that too That's uh, Sergeant Cook uses that stuff to okay. buy dog food dog or food. things that we, you know, we have to keep it in for an extended period okay. of time, but things like that. Yeah, I think that was for uh, in case you had to bring a dog to the pound or something for uh, yeah for a period of time where we had to pay. Correct. Yeah. We're, we're working out some other deals, possibly with Amherst and uh, <coughs> for. Some other way of doing that, we could almost eliminate that line possibly in the future. But I don't want to incur storage costs in Amherst and reduce this line over here. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, their facility has a high rent rate because. Well, the. <laughs> doesn't everything in Amherst? <laughs> I don't know. I have to pay the utilities on that building. That's so why it has a high lady, rent rate. The lady that we hired as our one of our new animal control people uses them, I believe, as a storage area. So we're trying to work something out. I'll talk to talk to Stone and see what we can do. Thank Chief you. Mike, Mike too. I'm going line by line just because I want no, to. No, no, no. Oh, okay, don't mind. <laughs>
You go by line by line. I got my pencil right here. Come, come closer. Right, that line zero. <laughs> my friend. Uh, so I'm sure you have the numbers. I just I gave David the enhanced one. I made a couple of mistakes on the enhanced budget. Um, when I translated the information on this, it didn't get translated onto the enhanced budget. It's not significant. It's more under uh, the wages full time. So factoring in what his COLA is and then his overtime. So I can give you that information. But as far as the level service budget, um, I'm sorry. Can you hang on? We don't. We don't, we don't have, have a copy of that budget. budget. So do we use the one you just buy on to everybody go? I was going to go through the regular before the hands so, and give you the good like. Okay. The questions are on right. Okay, so so the one that's in the one that's in David's preliminary budget. This this program one, this small. It's just, there's three adjustments that I didn't transfer from my level service over to this. Okay. Um, but as far as the level service budget, um, the the highlights of it are uh, we have a new contract for myself, uh, the increases of pay for the full-time fire prevention lieutenant and office manager are included in that level service. Um, the There was, uh, David and I had discussed, because when I originally put the level service together, it was, uh, I believe, a 17% increase, so we had decided to move it into the enhanced budget. Uh, I just wanted to, to make it very clear that one of the increases under level service was including the 19, up to 19 hours a week for the part-timer that we brought on board uh, that I had spoken to you about who has started, who's been with us for about three weeks. And so I had put that into next year's budget so the original proposal I put in was 67,000 for temporary wages part-time. Um, however, we changed that. We amended that back to 50,000 and then moved that, um, the, we moved it into the enhanced, enhanced budget what, with, what? with some additional information. Yes. We already hired this person, right? Uh, yes. So why wouldn't that be level services? We've already have them on staff. They no, should be it was just temporary for this the end of this budget period. It wasn't and temporary. It was we agreed, no, we agreed we to do it through. Yeah. Yes, so it should did. be. It should be part of it level, be services. level services. I I I, I agree. It should be part of level services. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Okay. So we we put it into the enhanced budget, uh, which if you want to take a look at. Um, a little bit different on the enhanced side. Uh, I've proposed um, bringing on board four part-time staff. <coughs> so that increase, increases that line item substantially, uh, $85,500. So what I had proposed was um, Adding four part-time positions, 24 hours max. I modeled it after having spoken with the police chief on how he handles his part-time. Uh, he has a couple part-timers. So no overtime, uh, health benefits if required. Uh, two firefighters at a starting pay of $17.50 who are firefighter EMT basics and have fire inspector one certification. And then two at $15.25 uh, with the EMT basic and inspector one. Um, so that's in the enhanced budget. So if, so if we do the part-time, that's gonna free you, or that's gonna free Lieutenant? It's gonna enhance Lieutenant yeah. McKenna. So I mean- So the, he'll be able to do more inspections? They would all be doing inspections. So, so you would be increasing inspections, but so the, I'm sorry. Inspection revenue should potentially go up. 
potentially I don't want to I don't want to get into the the potential um, I'm looking at it based upon NFBA standard and DOT's our um, OSHA standard where we are trying to have a truck available during specified hours that are going out and complying with the OSHA standard of two in and two out. We can't talk out of both sides of our mouth though. We either got to say that we're going to be available for inspections and the citizens deserve to understand that we're going to get out there and do those inspections and there's going to be revenues gener generated for that and we need to get those things done especially if we're going to be adding to that. I, I, I understand what you're saying that if the first and foremost they're going to be on the truck but if they're not on the truck We've got to have them out doing inspections. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. that, there was never a question about that. That's absolutely part of the plan. Well, then what, what can we anticipate for a revenue generation from that if they were available? Well, we, we have $135,000 here. We're up $85,000. Okay. We need to offset that somehow or we need to budget something in. I'm just saying, help I'm, us through this. It's, it's multi-leveled. And again, this has never been done in the town of Hadley, right. so I, I can give you the information on what I produced as a single fire prevention officer with all the other things on top of it. But I can tell you that the four firefighters would not also only just be doing inspections. There's vehicle maintenance, there's equipment that needs to be repaired in the station, so there's so. fire prevention, life safety. And that stuff um, saves you money as well. Yes. So. That does save money, but it also it's providing a service to the community. So the outreach to the seniors, the outreach to the students. Um, like I said, there's an awful lot more than just doing inspections. Not to say that inspections aren't critical, and that we can't increase revenue, um, but I can't say that that increase in revenue is going to cover their cost. No, no, we, yeah. we don't want to say and cover the cost. What we want, what we say, what we want to do here is, one, we're meeting the standards for having two people go out in a vehicle. Mm -hmm. So we're not sending the chief and the lieutenant out on every call now. We're sending some most of the time we're going to be sending <clears throat> the two part timers. Right, that's the way you got kind of set up. Are you going to reduce the time the chief and the lieutenant and some other people go out in the vehicle? No, it's to enhance the lieutenant. And if you look at the, I haven't gotten into the salary for the office manager, the standard is four personnel being at a scene. So as of right now, it's myself, Lieutenant McKenna, and then whoever shows up from call force if we're lucky. So the, the hope is, is to yes, get me more time in the office, but Lieutenant McKenna is still going to be required to be going to fire calls, not so much the, uh, you know, the motor vehicle accidents and that kind of stuff. But when we have incidences that, uh, you know, fire alarm activations where we don't know what's going on, then that truck is going to have to roll okay. with. But there, there is going to be some increase in inspections. Yes. So we do need to take kind of a swag. Yeah. There's already an increase in inspections with with Nick being on board now. Okay, so we need to kind of maybe make a swag at what that another increase might be. Well, because a lot of the, a lot of this comes out of that there's not enough people around during the daytime for call force. So, I mean, so that's you know, basically why I think that this has been introduced from our conversations, that this is to cover what we need to have covered during the daytime. This is, this is also phase one. There's more, there is more coming. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're in the process, and I've been asked to present on the MRI report. We're in the process of applying for a safer grant, uh, a, staffing, a staffing grant. However, we were concerned of requesting full-time staffing through the town because if we did that, we wouldn't be able to utilize that funding for to cover those positions. So ultimately, uh, you know, there's, there's an awful lot of stuff that's going into this plan with not a lot of time to do it during the day because we're going out the door all the time. Um, calls are up. You've seen, you've seen the numbers. Uh, I've made it very clear on my philosophy and the philosophy of the department on the calls that we have to go to. So um, this is kind of an initial attempt to start working towards that full-time department with a, you know, a fire-based ambulance service. If the numbers, and I understand Mike, all I the information has to yeah. come out on that. I, I know I asked you for this information, the fire calls to the ambulance calls. And you're, you said you had them. Yes. Yep. I, I'd really like to see that ratio. Fire calls to ambulance calls. Yeah. Okay. How many actual fire calls do we have, and how many actual ambulance calls do we have? Because somewhere down the road, whoever is in here is probably going to look at the full-time fire department and EMTs and look at an ambulance service for the town. I, I'm still open to that suggestion. I know some of the other people on the board aren't, 
but it's an option out there. And I see ambulance services in a lot of towns and cities that don't have ambulances and still have full-time fire departments. So we've interrupted you. <laughs> Go ahead and keep going through your budget. Okay. Uh, what else? So the communication budget is, uh, it combines both the fire department and PD under one service agreement. However, we do have equipment that is coming off of warranty. Uh, this includes the dispatch center console. So um, that's based upon an estimated price from our, our service provider, Goose Town Communications. So that's a, about a thousand dollar increase. Um, what line items that? 5242. Okay. 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 Uh, emergency medical supplies. I requested in FY16, and it was remained. It remained the same. Um, so, the fire department handles the cost of maintaining our AEDs, first aid equipment. We 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 get whenever we have the opportunity to. If we do something. We get one for one exchange with the ambulance service. However, batteries expire, uh, defibrillator pads expire. We don't get replacement for that. So there's a significant cost. On top of the fact that we have right currently, and uh, it is in our capital plan and also the fire association will be presenting to you uh, the potential of uh, bringing in some new AEDs. However, uh, you know the the repairs on it can be pricey as well, so that's the main portion of that under emergency medical supplies. What part of this budget? What line items are you su uh, going to submit to the capital planning? For what? Which funding? None of these. This is my. This is a regular budget. So none of these items meet the capital threshold. Is what no. you're saying? Um, telephone, cable, and internet. In 2016, we requested 6100 which was an actual cost for cable, internet, phone, and cell phones. Uh, it was voted at 4000 so I'm requesting that. Um, with everything that I've added up and multiplied by 12, that's the price that it comes to. So I'm asking this year for it to be increased to what was requested in the 2016 budget. Why so much? I mean, why is it so high? At um, 6500 well, that's the cost of the phones in the department, which have have improved. We have uh, we have done some work with Mike has done some work with Verizon on that, but that's our cell phones, that's our the iPads for inspections, that's um, internet cable, and that's basically what the cost is times twelve. It's five hundred a month. Okay. A little lower. We actually. Uh, I actually put together uh, a group where I had all the departments to come in and we evaluated the Verizon wireless plan that we had. We brought the schools in, uh, the folks from the town hall to see if we bundled all this and the price actually ended up being a little bit more expensive. So we have attempted to do the cost savings on this, but that's what we came up with. But we added more phones too. That was the other issue. We took a couple phones out, we had to add some so it, it is a better an entire better package all around yeah it's not I, my my budget does not cover Tim's phone or the plumbing inspector's phone or things like that this is strictly fire department uh, the engine ladder testing and maintenance um, I wish I had a crystal ball to tell you but this year uh, our engine one which is a 2001 uh, incurred close to $14,000 worth of repairs on the ladder and it's not something that Brian can do this is something that's done by a certified uh, Seagraves dealer uh, these trucks are run a lot we have a lot of calls they get used a lot so that's the average that's what I've come up with I can tell you this year that we are already in a negative uh, and I have not even been able to inspect our 1987 engine Two, which is normally a five to eight thousand dollar bill. That uh, emergency broadcast that's reverse nine one one. It's actually yes, it's code red. Yes, that's every year of that fee. Correct. Um, 
uniforms stayed the same. Even those are not the, case. Uh, the fire supplies, the PPE, uh, we have, in an effort not to have to come to the town and ask for $98,000 or whatever the request was to update the uh, personal protective equipment for our firefighters, we've put it into our annual budget. They're replacing up to five pieces of uh, full turnout gear. We are on a good cycle now where all firefighters minus two have all, they're all within the 10 year cycle. You're supposed to be, have to retire the gear with, after 10 years. Uh, the state won't even allow you to train on their fire ground with anything that's over 10 years. Never mind the abuse it takes to begin with. So you're probably looking at a five to seven year cycle on it. So we, we are keeping up with that and maintaining it. Uh, that also includes, includes gloves and helmets and boots because those wear out as well. So that's a very, that's an accurate figure. Unfortunately, there's a 3% increase having spoken with uh, the distributor who handles our type of equipment. That, back to that reverse 911 for yep. a second. Is that the fire department's or is that dispatch? It's emergency management and okay, so it's the whole the town. police, fire, and dispatch. Okay, basically, it's to notify the community. Well, of I'm just saying, could that be put into the uh, dispatch uh, dispatch budget rather than the fire no. department? It's under the emergency management budget. Okay, because it's strict. There's very strict guidelines on what it's being used for. I can tell you that we've actually uh, we've found some details on it where Mike is going to be able to have some cost savings on okay. how he calls out for his yeah. backfill. Or yeah. all, all of our details go out on a texting system now which we incur a charge for. We're actually able to cut that from our budget by using this system. Okay. We're how does that setting. one vary from the one that's used by the school? Yeah, it's it, it doesn't vary very much but you can't, you can't, I can't use our system to notify schools and the schools can't utilize it for us to use it for emergency. There's very strict guidelines on what you can use it for. <laughs> There's our IT problem we so. <laughs> have to have Five grand turns in a tent. Yeah. You have exactly. to have special codes and yeah. things it's like that to be able to even send these messages out. Um, so the computer hardware purchase, the station smarts, which we received state funding for, the uh, state funding, the cover two years of that uh, is is up this year, so that includes that increase um, on that system. That's for our fire reporting. That's for our inspection reports, and it's a very robust system that we're. It's going to take us a while to build it out, um, but it's something that we we really we really need to have. We were normally when John was on the department it was FirePoint software, which was just about as expensive. I know Mike's IMC program is ten thousand dollars a year. He was stating so uh, it's expensive for these these systems for some reason. Did but did this uh, take into account the um, IT consultants report? It was it was that information was given to the IT folks of right. what we have. So this is but he went through and he did or they did like priority red items. The fire department had some items in there. Is this? This is actually not hardware. This is actually software. service software. agreement for the software. Yes, right. Okay. Service agreement for software. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And that's about that's about it for the um, big increases. All right. Any other questions for the fire? So, I think for the fire, I think we should take the person that we added to this. That we added this year that needs to go with level services. Yeah, we'll I agree with that. We'll put that in. And so we need to adjust that, and then we need to do take a little estimate of what we think the increase will be in inspections revenue by adding the, the enhanced side to this plan, just so we know what we just uh, what we think we might be able to get out of it. And yeah, is there anything else is only, off? It's thirty thousand dollars. So, I mean. Be some number goes over. Are you around tomorrow? We can work on all these issues. Okay. So just a further discussion that I, I was talking with other people regarding communities and, and fundings of fire departments in that when a fire truck is, is sent to a scene and it is a non town uh, person that's involved with the fire truck being sent to it, many communities will charge the insurance 
of the incident. Okay, now we don't have the manpower or the staff by any means in order to accomplish that at this point in time, but I'd like to look at that for the future to see if that is something that we should be doing. It's probably something more the information is already on the police department side that, that you would have to which get that. Talking about? Just, just for a car accident or something. They car accident car when a fire truck, truck is, is sent. To a motor vehicle to accident? To a motor yes. vehicle accident. We have, that in, we have that in place, but Northampton's even dropped out of it because there's... Uh, they were having too many issues with collecting. Folks weren't paying it, and uh, they don't even make them. It's like you got to chase people around, so you need the staff yeah. at the door. I, I just want to look into it. I think that we we should identify it and see whether or not it's an option, because people deserve to know whether or not this is possible. I am not under any circumstances suggesting that a person who pays taxes in Town Hathi ever get a bill from our fire department, but. If there's incidents that we're having and there's the fire trucks being dispatched, we had a hell of an accident that happened just the other day where you guys were on site for nine hours, okay, down here at the bike shop where, you know, you guys had to be there for, you know, half the night. And I think that there should be a charge incurred for that. And I don't think that's unfair. And I understand through uh, somebody in town who's an insurance agent who said that, you know, this is a standard policy that many municipalities do. Now it's a huge pain because it's it's a specialty, and I understand that. But a lot of um, smaller departments will sub that out, the the collection agency aspect of it for a percentage, whatever their percentage is. Exactly. And I think we should and, look at that. And well, since you brought it up, the ambulances though they yeah. subcontract okay. that out. Exactly. And since you brought it up, lines. you're going to have the same issues with an ambulance service if you start on. So is. Um, we have more public safety. So. Oh, I didn't realize. Do you want to do yours when you do the town hall? I don't Sorry. think he's prepared tonight. All right, we'll do it. I apologize. That's fine. He's Mine's special. pretty simple, anyways. I'm well, we'll, 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 we'll wait. <laughs> Inspections are on Thank for tonight. Thanks, no, guys. It's, it's in the agenda for tonight, but it's actually in the schedule for March something. Yeah, yeah. it would be with the finance committee. That's the finance committee. Right. Uh, I think we'd be remiss tonight if we didn't uh, say a thank you to both our chiefs that are here this evening for the great job they did for the Huckowitz dedication that occurred on Saturday as well. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, actually, are you guys staying for the, for the, there was a, are you guys going to stay for the discussion about the contracts? Uh, no, I actually spoke with David because they're settling. He didn't think you he needed us here, but if you need us. Nope. You're talking about the dispatch contract? Yeah. The executive. What about the emergency management? The dispatch services. The, oh, the EMD. The, the, the. Oh, so this is, you're oh. talking about the, uh, the enhanced uh, medical dispatch, the, the contract yeah. with the town of uh, Amherst. So we, we have a, a <coughs> contract with the, uh, the town of Amherst, an agreement with the town of Amherst uh, for them to provide uh, emergency medical dispatch services, uh, and we pay for that through a pass-through grant. Uh, and uh, we uh, we uh, have an agreement that we have to renew annually. And unfortunately, uh, with the events uh, surrounding Mr. Masanti, uh, that didn't happen. So now we're bringing that to the table for us to renew that agreement. So the state pays the fifteen thousand dollars right now, mm -hmm. and then we pay that on to you, the town of Amherst, to provide that service. Yeah. Which is basically a dispatcher who stays on the phone and there's an emergency a medical call. That's walks up through yep. CPR. Yep. <laughs> Any questions about that? Yeah, what happens if the grant goes away? We're on the hook for fifteen grand. Yeah. But we're, we're required to have the service. I was under the understanding this is a mandate. It is. is it a mandate? Well, fifteen thousand dollars in and of itself isn't a mandate. So the, the someone has somewhere. to provide someone, someone has, has to provide the service. Yeah. But the way that we have it set up right now. You got it through. Yeah, you got it through dispatch that you just is it because they tie it right into Amherst County. The ambulance. 
No, I think this is different. This is strictly for EMT. This is for the medical dispatching. I'm not. Yeah, emergency not really medical sure dispatch. What the contract includes. It's intermunicipal agreement for. So. My, well, my basic understanding of it is that it's to train the Amherst dispatchers to walk someone through CPR until the ambulance arrives. And they provide that service to us right. in exchange for the, the cost. Right. And if the grant does go away, I don't have an answer for it. Essentially what we'll have to do is add to our communications budget and get our own people trained in that, which is also going to require impact bargaining uh, and a change in the contract. And probably having two dispatchers on shift. That is, yes. That's my understanding is that you have, yeah. you have to have two because if someone is walking someone through CPR, they cannot be answering any, you know, they cannot be doing any other task. So we're happy We're happy to look into other alternatives. I think, um, Mr. Devine, you've raised some questions about whether this is the most advantageous for the town of Hadley. Uh, I think I recommend that for this current fiscal year that we take care of this, uh, this agreement uh, with the understanding that for FY17 we can look into alternatives and report back to the board. Okay, so moved. Second. Any more discussions? Or at least negotiate. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Aye. Right. So I think that's all the police and fire things for tonight. Cool. We had uh, a review of the MRI report, but we can, it's up to you. Um, I got a lot going on. That's not on the agenda. Yeah, yes, yeah, it, it is. is. Let's not do that. You probably don't want to hear it, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we reschedule that? Would that be okay with you, Mike? Let's see, that's reschedule number four or five? <laughs> sure, <Shorty. laughs> Um Would okay. it be okay if I shipped you all a draft of an initial look at it? Yes. I, 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 I think the theory there was that before we make any final budget decisions, it would be helpful to know put it in the context of that report. So that's why we had asked for it. Yes, oh, although back. it would have been better to put it actually as an item on the agenda instead of rolling it in with the budget discussion. Exactly. Because yeah. it's kind of hidden in the budget discussion. Can I just briefly summarize before sure. you go, we go into the, we have, I know David and I have discussed it and normally a study like that, you don't, it can take years. We've really chipped away at an awful lot of items on this absolutely so um it's pretty substantial we do we still have a long way to go out of the what 165 recommendations mm -hmm. but we've actually implemented quite a bit it's good. good and we want to hear about that okay right. so thank you so treasurer right. are you here for we are here for five three for, for land and also i think the building municipal building the bridge here on that too yeah, good. Get the other guys. Oh, yeah. Go wake them up. Oh, yes. Okay, so. It's, um, and also with nine, uh, the water lines, uh, we have David Eisenfeld here from the Bank, so everything that involves the borrowing, so 5-3 and 5-7. So why don't we just go ahead and start with 5-3, the procurement. We were talking about this earlier. And we right. stopped in the middle of it, so. Okay, so can I make my plea about the, are we going to that one now? Yes. Okay. Please. Well, I, I think that as a board, we need to talk about the roles and responsibilities of the OPM. And I don't think, I don't feel like we've had adequate conversation about that. Because I looked at the information that, um, David. Dave Wiskevitz forwarded today from the state and then just tried to line that up with the draft. And it seems like they, there's there's a lot of room for interpretation on the role, so we okay. should probably talk about that. All right. Um, no? So yes. before we talk about that, why don't we talk about the borrowing part? Do you want to go ahead and... So there are two land articles now that are being presented on the, uh, the, the uh, annual town meeting. Report. The Municipal Building Committee submitted a land, uh, an article to purchase land in North Hadley, and the Select Board is uh, working on a uh, draft RFP for purchase of land in Central Hadley. Um, Mr. Eisenthal took a look at the uh, 
the requirements for it. We're, this is going to have to be a borrowing article. Right. Um, and so we brought Mr. Eisenthal in in order to talk about the, the, the setup for the borrowing. And it turns out that there's a number of things that we have to take into account. Um, briefly, that we're going to need a preliminary legal opinion from Bond Council, which is going to take time to do. And I think that you said that between now and Labor Day uh, would be an appropriate uh, time frame for us to, to make that work. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to you because you're looking increasingly concerned. No, I'm not concerned at all. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, um, as David said, uh, we, uh, the town treasurer, uh, David and I, had a conversation the other day. We were talking about a number of uh, issues that the town May uh, uh, we're may be borrowing uh, in the near future, and maybe authorizing new borrowing in the near future. And uh, uh, I, I just uh, pointed out that um, um, the land purchase. I mean, the, the timing can be critical, and uh, uh, not to uh, uh, make it make this the overriding consideration with uh, with. A, uh, with a land purchase, but that uh, before the treasurer and this board can borrow on behalf of the town, um, there, need be, and, uh, there would need to be a preliminary legal opinion from the town's bond company, which is Lock Board LLP. And um, they would be reviewing the proceedings, including a debt exclusion vote if such is taken. Uh, and also for a land purchase, uh, as uh, um, Mr. Nixon and Ms. Anderson and I were talking, we're discussing, um, there could be potential tax exemption issues uh, as far as make, making sure we, the bond council will want to do due diligence on the use of the land. Uh, I'm not coming to you to say that there is any, are any issues, but um, they would want to at least review uh, any potential private activities that could uh, compromise the tax exemption of a borrower. So that's, and those are the issues. That Why would we be talking about private activities? Well, um, they may be things that you wouldn't even suspect would be private activities. Uh, and I'll give you an example. If um, the town were to buy some land and build a building and decide to put some solar panels on the roof. Depending on the contract that the town would have for those solar panels, or a wind turbine, say, um, that could be considered under the Internal Revenue Code private activity that could uh, render the borrowing not tax exempt in the extreme case. Could affect a loan, yeah. So, um, or another another possibility is that if the town built a building and leased out space, say, to uh, a daycare center, um, that could be something that would compromise the tax exemption of the borrowing. Now, we're, we are not bond council. We're the financial advisors to the town. Um, so my role really is just to raise the issues uh, to your awareness and uh, just make sure that, if possible, that uh, with any decision uh, to proceed with a land purchase, that time be built in to uh, allow this kind of, uh, bond council to review uh, these issues. Do you have a suggestion so, as to the time? So uh, the, for both these, for either or both these land purchase articles, we, we need to do this as a debt exclusion. We don't have the capacity within our budget to assume debt within, within the levy. So we need to have the town meeting vote on May 5th, and then by law, no later than September 15th, have a ballot vote. Uh, Labor Day is when the preliminary bond decision can be, uh, a preliminary legal decision from the bond council can be delivered, so we'd be looking at uh, a ballot question sometime in mid-September. Well, David, yeah. in, with so, all due yeah. respect, uh, part of what bond council is going to want to review is uh, are the debt exclusion proceedings. They'll want to right. review that to make sure that that is also. All right, so we're going to so be doing it, it has to happen August. first. We won't get the bond council 
opinion until we've right. had the, the ballot. Thank you for helping me get the process <laughs> yeah. straight. So it's a chicken and egg thing. We have to have the, the chicken, or we have to have the property first, and the vote to actually give us a debt exclusion, and then well, we can go through the other part. Not necessarily, but the um, I think that. Uh, and, and this really would be a matter of, for, of reasonable expectations ahead of a borrowing as far as what the land was going to be used for. And uh, I, I mean, at this point, there may be, if you're, all you're doing is buying a, par a parcel of vacant land, uh, that you might not be as constrained as you might be as if you were buying a building where you had some definite idea as to how the building was going to be used. All I'm saying is that the uh, Bond Council's role is twofold. They review the proceedings of town meeting and the, and the voters uh, where there's a debt exclusion vote, and they also make sure that any borrowings uh, are, they look at the tax exemption to make sure you can enjoy, uh, as a municipality, uh, tax exemption. So, so really, I mean, we need to know what we're getting into, what we're buying, if we're, we're going to possibly do it. So we need to know, <coughs> is it land, is it a building, what we're going to use it for? And then that would the price of that would tell us what we're going to put on the bond or on the warrant article, and then you have to have build-in time at the end of that before you close right. to make sure and before you vote on the actual. So that's what all you're saying right now, right? Right. I mean, that there has to be in between when the authorization happens, when that exclusion vote happens, and when the town and the seller uh, come to the table and close on the. So you're just set on the purchase and sale. There, uh, there needs to be a legal process to make sure that the town, uh, that the treasurer, and you have the legal authority to borrow. So you're telling us it takes 90 days for that to be, be done. Well, I think that the, you know we were talking about uh, summer. You know, being summer, that the, the it's possible it could get maybe a little bit for, um, shortened, but really you would want to allow some time to. Um, allow that process to unfold um, rather than thinking that you could close within a very short period of time after a debt exclusion, for example. Okay. I get that. That's good information to have. <laughs> I thought it was, it, it's interesting to, because we're always looking for how we can increase our revenues and find other sources of revenue. And uh, we need to be careful about that, I guess, when we're, when we're into a borrowing, that we don't get into a borrowing that was completely tax exempt for tax exempt purposes, and then get an idea of what we want to do. I think the idea of solar panels and making some money off it is very intriguing. If we're going to be thinking like that during, during the time of the loan, we should think about it right now. And um, as we were talking about with, with David, it's not that we're restricted from doing that. We just need to be clear about that up front. And sometimes it's worthwhile to have a section of it be not tax exempt. Maybe we'll still come out ahead. But whatever our intentions are going into it, we have to be clear about it. And we have to hold to that during the, for the duration of the borrowing, or the payoff. Okay, can we modify it after we buy the piece of property and change in our decision making process? Yeah, because I, mean, I don't think many people were thinking about solar panels six years ago right. when they may have entered into SRFs for a 35 year or 30 year, 20 year plans, right. and now have decided to go back and revisit that. Is that can it's, it be modified? It's a it's a reasonable expectation as of the well, a couple of things, and I'll point out I'm not a tax attorney, although I sometimes joke that I play one on TV. Um, so. Um, the, the issue there is that, I mean, if the town really doesn't have any clear expectation, and I think this is, I'll really give the caveat that this is something that the real tax lawyers need to review, but if you are just buying a piece of land and you don't have any expectation at the time you borrow that there's going to be and any private any, usage, any private usage, that's not a problem. It's as you go along, if you get to a bond issue, I mean, there are a couple of points where you would really need to worry about this. If the uh, you get to the bond issue and you really think, well, we think we're going to put solar panels on this, at least what you want to do is you want to have the treasurer or the town administrator um, provide whatever contracts are, are going to be um, executed or whatever expectations that the town has relative to uh, uh, 
um, to, these, to these items. Now, in the extreme case, let's say that the town buys the land and builds a building with every intention or actually does use the building for a number of years as a municipal facility, but for whatever reason, say, seven years down the road, the, the town decides to sell the building. Uh, in that case, the town, as part of its post-issuance compliance, would need to talk to us, talk to bond council about remedial measures in order to uh, retain tax exemption on the bonds. Any, any sale proceeds, for example, might need to, and this is again, on bond council would say exactly how this would unfold, but it's possible that any sale proceeds would be, have to be used to uh, retire uh, outstanding uh, bonds for, that were issued to the work, to or build or purchase and build the facility. I think the biggest issue here was through all the conversations with the building committee and, and the board was we, are, we have park and rec up in the existing building now along with fire. And if we were to build fire first and at some point build park and rec on the same piece of property, they're still both tax exempt. So I, that wouldn't affect it. It's really just, what I'm talking about is just giving <coughs> time between the authorization by town meeting, by the voters, and proceeding to a closing to allow bond council to do its diligence on the proceedings themselves for making sure that everything is in order, but also to ask the kind of <coughs> questions. I mean, it may be that the answers are very straightforward, as you are indicating, and so there's no issue. But Well, this was just conversation we had, so I threw it out there. Right, but I'm just saying, if, you, if, you know, if the answers are straightforward like that, then there's these can be answered pretty quickly, but we want to allow enough time for bond council to address these issues. So is yeah, um, since it does take a while for bond council to review it, and the ballot vote is one of the items being reviewed, it sounds like, David, we're we going to want to schedule the ballot, um, and obviously work with the town clerk, or the registrars to get this as quickly as possible after town meeting, right? Because it's the review process that takes time. So we want, we, we want to have our paperwork lined up and in as early yeah. as possible so that they have there, time. To there may be a way of short, shortening that up, but you need at least 35 days from 35. the town meeting mm -hmm. in order to register the voters. So. Right. Before school gets out, we do. Yeah. So in the schedule you lay down our, our, our agenda here, is that taken no, into no, account? No, apparently that's different, so we'll uh, prepare a different schedule now. Okay. Great. Any other questions about this? No, it's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry you had to wait so long. <laughs> oh, wait, there's more. There's more. So, um, so, let's, so let's, let's just go ahead and just talk about the RFPs in general for a minute. So the schedule we have here is early March release, which we still can do. Um, Mid-April, we're going to return the RFPs and the award, but we're really not going to award until after a town meeting vote. So it's like mid-April to July well, July something because if we go to town meeting, the money won't be appropriated until sometime after that. Mm -hmm. So that, that schedule kind of needs to be changed a little bit too. Yep. All right. And then so we need to put in, we have bond council review next in there. Mm -hmm. You know, along with that, through this budgetary process, we need those two departments to continue their budget as planned also. Well, let's just finish this here in front of us. Yeah. Um, so that's the overall schedule. Mm -hmm. And then, so the next thing is the actual, does anyone want to talk about the actual RFP and the RFQ? We already did an RFP on it. Well, the RFP is the one we're going to do for land in the center of town. So we that was David submitted that to us. I made a couple of comments on it. Did anybody else have any comments on it? Okay, we got so some comments from. Yeah, yeah. these guys did. Yeah. Are you talking about these uh, land, land purchases in the center of town? The center of town. Yeah, we did uh, pass on some suggestions in regards to um, the project description. Um, we're not getting back information if if what possible changes occurred. 
But I did look on to your, um, um, your, what's that called, doc? Board docs. Board docs. Board docs. And it didn't seem like uh, the, the changes to the uh, project description had been done. Incorporated. Yeah. So okay. there were some very minor things. Uh, the way the project was described was more of a pie shape, and we kind of wanted to take out, we just made a suggestion to take out the, um, the depth and the rear dimension and just leave the front dimension and, and the, amount of the acreage. overall size. So we had just some minor things like that that we wanted to incorporate on that. Okay. Get a chance to review those? Is there any problem with incorporating those? No, and I have those uh, suggestions. Excellent. Okay. So why don't we, we have these all, we'll bring them back next meeting and vote to release them if we're all set with it. So you're, you're complete with those now? It, nothing came out of last night's meeting to be added, correct? Uh, uh, for the land? Correct. No, no, we had made those suggestions a while ago. We, we just want to make sure that they were incorporated. And nothing last night changed. Well, we didn't no. discuss it because we haven't seen an updated version of it, so there's nothing to discuss. And after we get it updated, we could feed forward it to them. So that we have a meeting next week, so we can look at it Tuesday. Excellent. Okay. All right. Uh, but the Municipal Building Committee did submit another article for uh, land purchase in the north uh, part of Hadley, so we would have to issue an RFP for that. Which okay. So let's stay on this one for now. Okay. All right. Let's not wander. Got it. We've wandered a lot tonight. <laughs> it's like being in, all, in New Zealand. Happy wandering. Um, okay, so the RFQ for the OPM. So we've all seen that. Molly has some some questions that yep. came from Mr. Muscovitz. Um We can kind of yeah. put those together and pull them together and review them a little bit. I haven't I seen that, but I just got one question. Why are we going for an OPM when we don't even have anything to build yet? for probably a year. Well, because the state law says you have to have your OPM before you go out for a builder, for a designer. So we have to line up somebody to do this. It's a chicken and the egg. Yeah. It's, it's no cost to you. And, well, that's what I mean. We don't is it, is this going to cost us in the meantime, having this person on board? No. Once we bring the OPM. Or is it going to be an on-call thing like we did? No. Once you bring the OPM on board, the OPM has to be involved in your uh, RFQ for your designer. So you do start incurring okay. a cost for the OPM. That's all the information you just sent us? Yeah. I, I just opened my email. I didn't get a chance to read it. But that's right. just to design a spec so you've made the decision to go forward and do yeah. that point. Yeah. Not until then, though. Correct. And then if we, at any time we decide we're not going forward, then we don't pay. I mean, if, if we decide this whole thing and we get a town meeting and everyone says, no, we're not doing any of this stuff, it's over anyway. We're done. We don't pay any money to anybody. We just need to have the process done and have the people lined up and the numbers lined up so we can say this is what it's going to cost. Okay. I, I just want to clarify. I sent out the, uh, the, the guidelines for uh, uh, getting an OPM in position. Um, some of my comments last night was based on older version of what I had already seen. <clears throat> but I just recently saw a more updated version, so I think the current version is a little more in line with what I would expect for an OPM to be requested to do. So I think that's on the right track. It just, once again, would be good to see the final draft so we know what you're seeing, so that when you're approving it, you know that we've approved it and, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. David, um, the one you forwarded to us is the new or the old? I didn't afford any... I didn't forward the RFQ. I just forwarded the guidelines. The guidelines. The guidelines. Is that the correct. recent most? Is that the guidelines you want us to adhere to or to look at, or I is there a new know, set? I don't know if it's the most recent. It's 2004. They came out at the same time that the whole requirement for the OPM apparently came out. Mm -hmm. it was just One a longer big suggestion version. is we need to put a revision or a date on any anything that gets changed because there's no dates, there's no revisions. So right now. Quite honestly, we don't know which is the latest edition right now. So there's been modifications to some of these things, but there's no dates on them. So um, we're, we, uh, we are also are getting very confused. The only place that I'm assuming that is the latest version is on your 
on, on your computers. That's we, the we latest now have, version. That's a good assumption. That's the latest version. Mm -hmm. and that that's the only way. Because, but there's nothing here to say. Mm -hmm. Say what. But we don't know what you you see right now. Yeah, we have no idea. We see lots of things. <laughs> so a date on these things would be advantageous. So okay. can I ask my overarching question here? Yep. Okay, so I guess the biggest question I had um, in this one, it talks about the scope of services, talks about the OPM being responsible, blah, 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 and then it goes through the initial phase, and, and everywhere in here it refers to the select board. Um, so based on my reading of this, the way it's written currently, the OPM would be interacting directly with the select board. For, that's probably the easiest way to do it because the other thing we have to decide as a select board is, to, is whether we want to have a building committee that guides the OPM and that we haven't talked about that. Well, that's my point. <coughs> I, yes, I think we, we need to talk about that. I mean, the only thing I would say is if we, when we put this out is we could probably say a select board are their designees. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to suggest. we've already got a building committee uh, there that's given us all this information delegate. anyway. Because yes. yeah. we did. mentioned on the last part of the, um, that section. Because we do have to decide. There's a, there's a lot of things we have to decide as this moves forward. But these are things we can decide as we're advertising for things. Um, mm -hmm. So we don't have to hold up to make the decision. It doesn't have anything to do with the qualifications of the OPM. No. no. I just wanted to make sure that we're not locking locking in a structure that we may not be able to adhere to or choose not to adhere to by, well, no, by virtue it, of this. Because anytime we say select board, then we as a select board can vote to delegate it out, which yeah. is kind of one of the great things of being a select board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I typically used something. to the language where it's delegate. <laughs> David, did you say that's in here? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't see a yeah, delegation in here. I'll, I'll have to find it for you. I don't remember what section. Uh, okay. So, but just one comment also. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time and looking at these buildings and everything. I think it would be very beneficial to whoever is the OPM if we are involved in the process because we are knowledgeable about a lot of the needs of these buildings and we can help direct. We know what's been going on. So we'd like to have a part of that, and some, even if it's just a subcommittee of that, but um, it, it's... You know, I couldn't agree more. You know, it's Absolutely. just that we're going to be reinventing the wheel if we have to go back to the select board coming up. In, in negotiating the OPM as opposed to having us involved. We've already been down this road. So as, as I was reading it, the OPM, it didn't preclude you being involved because the OPM and the guide and the RFQ we have now will gather information and review information. I see you as preparing the information and you could present it and, and do it any way you want to. So I don't see that as, we didn't say that you couldn't do it, so I saw, I saw that as an open-ended. Um, so we can add it in and be more specific, or we can leave it a little more open-ended. It's right, up but to we, I think we just have to be careful, though, because we also have municipal employees on the group right now. We do well for the municipal building committee. We do, yes. Yeah, that's what I mean. And two of them are inspectors. For the municipal building, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, but so. But when they're no gathering, offense, but I mean, we we oh, need to yeah, be I very totally careful agree. of this. It can't. I don't think it can be the. I think we're talking, about, we're talking about two things, I think, now. Because when okay. we decide if we're going to have a building committee to move the projects forward, then we do need to talk about the membership of that committee. Mm -hmm. But when the OPM is yeah. gathering information that's already been prepared, going to the municipal building committee is perfectly what they should do. Absolutely. Yeah. They get that information. They, they've already got that legwork done. Well, the library, for instance, when we had the hype, the OPM was hired, um, or we had the RF2 go out, it often referred to the design and planning committee as mm -hmm. a, a reference that they would be dealing with or a group they would be dealing with. It wasn't strictly the trustees and the select board. So it's just. I think they actually chose that before they actually said it, submitted it. So that's what I understood. They just they decided to have that committee. I think that was considered best practice by the state yeah. Yeah. as part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else on the OPM that we need to include in the proposal so we'll take all this stuff together swish it around try to get something back out by Friday mm -hmm. and send it to everybody and go from there date it and sign off on it or don't sign off on it but let's mm -hmm. get back but I have a question on the timing of it is the OPM need to be in place before the land purchase no, no. the okay. OPM has to be in place so projects 
so for a one and a half million dollars. So it's going to go on the spring town meeting as well, but as a separate article? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so if, um, unless there's other borrowing articles, I mean, we don't want to have, but we'll have to talk about that. Maybe it won't be a borrowing article, as but soon it could be a borrowing article, as, but it's not going to wait for the land purchase. As soon as, as, soon as uh, the select board uh, closed the warrant tonight, uh, I will give you a copy of everything that I have. Uh, there's, there's a powerful amount of borrowing that we're going to have to talk about. Uh, and I think it might tip a million dollars. Okay. All right. And that's, you're still here to talk about the water line eventually here? Yes. Okay, so are we done with item 5.3? Yeah, just what uh, Molly was asking about where it mentions another committee being designated or being involved. Mm -hmm. It's not until the construction phase, yeah. and it's uh, number six. Yep, C6. Yep. But so that's towards the tail end of mm -hmm. that. But it's actually recommended you do it sooner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, do we actually have to close the warrant tonight? Uh, yeah. So long as it's open, people can continue to submit. You have 31 articles. Jeez. That's what's well, can, can I, you can can I just it, bring... Make it easy. Just vote to close, uh, and then we can review the warrant at the next meeting. Yeah. Everybody because okay with that? Yeah. I, I'm okay with that, but one of the, I mean, a huge thing that we need to talk about is this IT report. And we screamed and screamed and we finally got it, and it's like really good stuff in there. Um, but that, that tonight. No, but I want to make sure that we don't close and then, you know, so we, we can may always to open and put articles in. Exactly. So, you, so you, yeah. have a, table. you have a number of capital articles where mm -hmm. this, uh, the, the recommendations of the technology plan can be uh, inserted there without it having to reopen the warrant. I'll we'll make a motion we close the warrant. Second. Any more discussion? We're going to need an all day Saturday meeting. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so let's jump down to Route 9 waterline projects right now. Uh, a little bit of history, we uh, applied to the state that the Mass Department of Transportation is going to widen Route 9 from Wally Street to about 400 feet uh, east of the intersection of Route 47, about where the, uh, the Farm Museum is right now. Uh, in coordination with that Mass DOT project, we're going to replace the 100-year-old water lines underneath there. We applied last August for an SRF, a state revolving fund uh, uh, loan for this project, we were told no. So at the, at the special town meeting of October, we uh, authorized borrowing for $377,000 to be paid by water rates. Um, Senator Rosenberg uh, was able to secure for us after we were told that we were ineligible for the SRF loan and SRF loan, and the bids came back favorably. The bid for the, our portion of the work is $217,210. Uh, Senator Rosenberg was able to get uh, secure for us up to $379,000 of the SRF loan program. Uh, we're scrambling a little bit. This, we're, this is uh, an, a unique situation where we have received an award without having done a lot of the pre-qualifying uh, legwork. So we're working with Senator Rosenberg's office and the Department of Environmental Protection to jump through the hoops that we need to do for there. Uh, David Eisenthal was ha good enough to uh, give us some feedback as to whether the SRF loan program for a 10-year borrowing would be as advantageous, less advantageous, more advantageous than the authorization that we secured at the uh, at the October town meeting. So, do you have uh, some information for us? Yes, and I, through Mr. Nixon, I submitted this to the board. Um, the answer is that under current market conditions. Uh, and assuming uh, a bond issue that would take it, that would finance a number of uh, currently authorized town projects with a total uh, amount of about $1.2 million. Um, financing the, uh, this piece through that bond issue 
would be uh, about at, the, at a similar economic cost to the um, to the SRF. Um, the issue is that um, uh, bond rates change um, much more, which much with, with much more frequency and amplitude than uh, the SRF uh, loans. The SRF is uh, will will lend the money at two percent. Uh, there are some costs, ongoing costs with the SRF, but it essentially, stays fixed. It, yeah. But it's essentially a two percent interest rate on the loan, and that does not change. Um, so um, the uh, uh, I think that the idea of protecting the downside would be uh, going with the assuming, and this did assume a ten-year term. But many of the SRF loans can be done over. 20, and uh, clearly if we were looking at a 20-year term, uh, the SRF would be even more to the town's advantage. Uh, I will say that if the town did have other projects um, that, or I should maybe back up and say, one of the reasons that uh, um, um, the, for the comparable uh, economic impact was that uh, we would be looking at a relatively small bond issue and uh, some um, relatively high cost of issuance for that bond issue. If you were looking at doing a, a larger bond issue, say of the size that this that the town did uh, in the fall of 2014, the results might have been a little bit different. But given where the town is at, it is the uh, thought is that um, protecting the downside would. Uh, uh, Argue in favor of going with the SRF loan. Okay. So, what do we need to do to? So, as I said, we're in a situation where uh, we've re we've received a gift from Senator Rosenberg that we weren't expecting. There's a number of uh, uh, hoops that we have to jump through. So, if the board could take a vote tonight to uh, authorize uh, uh, the chair to execute any and all documents necessary in order for us to implement this SRF loan program for the Route 9 uh, water line project. That would be good. So moved. Second. Any more discussion? Yeah, I got a comment. Go ahead. Way back when, when I said we should have went all the way to East Street with the 1904 water main, and you were all against it, here's a perfect example where this SRF fund could have been borrowed at 2% and the job completed down Route 9. But they okay. weren't widening the road at that time either. It doesn't matter. It's mm -hmm. still a 1904 water main, Joyce. Okay. You're still arguing about it. All right. And it's going to cost us twice as much I'm to do it. I'm not arguing about it. It needs right. to be done. There's all. a motion and a second. All those in favor of going after the SRF loan? Aye. 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 Upstain. Aye. Okay, so we'll do that. Yep. Thank you. Actually, you're kind of giving a gift, you can't really. You can't not vote for it. You could, but yeah. that looks stupid. Yeah. Then they can make him vote for the final boss. <laughs> okay, so last, I'm going to jump to the public safety complex re roofing on call services because I think there's some people waiting in the audience for this. Well, I think it's been requested that this be put on. Uh, change of plan on this. Uh, first of all, the, our committee needs to apologize for the lateness of all these things, but unfortunately the uh, architect services that we have hired had some very serious um, it, personal issues that have really s stopped the process on a lot of the things that we needed done soon. It looks like it's on track. I, I had a long conversation with the gentleman that had looked at our specs previously, actually quite a number of months ago. He was very surprised that this had not gone forward. But through that conversation, well, I, what our first ask uh, request was from Lingwin and Charles was to uh, review what we had and tell us if they were good enough for the DCAM process. <coughs> he has, by this uh, conversation this morning, he said no, and he gave me some good examples of why it wasn't good. So what we'd like to request of you is to um, the 
proposal that you have in front of you is three, there's three phases. Phase one is the specs. That we would like you to go forward with approving that at this point. We are not going to go forward at this moment with phase two and, and phase three. But we, uh, that's the bidding of the project right now in the construction administration. Uh, we need to talk to them some more on that and uh, get a good feel for what is going to be incurred in those two phases. But we have voted um, and like to go forward with phase one. We recommend. So that. phase phase one cost how much? The eleven thousand. What do you anticipate the phase two and phase three? When are we going to do that? I mean, should we be using uh, Lundgren and Sharples if you still have questions regarding their company to do the designing? And then all of a sudden, if they're gone in a year and we decide to go forward with that plan, are we giving somebody else a plan that? Well, the the the, the, the bids go. That's one of the reasons why we wanted to preclude and just just do phase one at this time. Let's get the specs out. Let's get this project on board. If things do not go forward with uh, our architect right now, we are in the process of uh, discussing that and going uh, with our second choice. We need to get these projects going. He has assured us that his issues are taken care of and that he's going to jump on because there's like four or five that we've, we've had in the process for quite some time and they've been solved. But he has assured us that he's got the people on board to help us and get these things going quickly and we want to see the turnaround quickly. This is the first one. He's got to get this done because okay. we are really in a time crunch on this one. Okay, then why don't we go with two and three then? Why are we holding off on that? Because if we, if, if it turns out that uh, they cannot complete phase one in a timely manner, we do not want them to do two, them and, three. To do two and three. So the $11,000 is coming from the money appropriated for the roof? Or I mean, yeah, so the there, there are two pots of money. There's 150000 for the uh, for the roof project that could come from there, as well as approximately $40,000 left over in the uh, on-call article. And you'd like it to come from the on-call? Yes. Okay. So the motion? Make a motion to authorize the chair to execute. No. Yeah, phase one. Are you to doing it? Just a motion to proceed with phase one. Okay. And to fund it out of the on-call services. Okay. So you don't have to sign this? We all, I think we all have to sign this. I'll do it. Okay. All right. So make a motion to proceed with the um, phase one of the project as outlined in the memo from the Municipal Building Committee. Second. Any more discussion? Yeah. Uh, um, last year we talked about leftover monies from the individual accounts and how we were going to be able to funnel and use that money for other projects. Once we, we did that, we pulled it off town meeting floor because we were going to do that internally and be able to take the money that were left over from the individual projects. And is there money, is there $11,000 there that we can utilize for that? There's not. No. 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 How much is there? It's a couple of grand. Is, if you add them all up right now, I mean, some of them haven't been done, um, but you're talking just a few thousand, yeah. maybe two or three, rough figure. We were kind of hoping to have some money left over from these bigger projects, I think. Okay. Okay, so motions on the table, seconds on the table. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. We appreciate sure. that. Okay. One more. So, Two more items to do. Three more. Uh, annual oh, yeah. report dedication. We've had lots of input, I understand. We have a lot of input. Uh, we, we were kicking it around in the office. We were wondering if you would uh, consent to um, award the Fred Oakley Volunteer Award to Irene Benben and Helen Bai, and then dedicate the, uh, the annual report to Howard Kosky, Dan Dukevitz, and Constance Mischkowski. That's a lot of people. Yeah, you've done it before. It's actually fewer people than you've done in the past. In one, in one year? Yep. What's the most you've ever done? Four. Well, you've done a whole department. Well, that doesn't really count. Well, it does. 
like 20 people. Okay, all right. I, I saw a wonderful suggestion that we dedicate the town and court to, to Connie, and I, I think that's a great suggestion, and I, I think that we can, you know, those other people aren't going anywhere either, and I know Danny's done some wonderful things, but Connie, in her year after she got done, I think would be a wonderful tribute to her. And then I wouldn't, I don't want to say watered down, but I think that, uh, I think that we should consider her solely for the, the dedication on that. And, and the uh, Fred Oakley Award to the two folks is a wonderful idea as well. That would be my suggestion. Helen Bond, Ryan, I and have we done the um, dedication to employees, retired employees? Mike Clemontina retired. Uh, oh, yeah. Mike Klamoski, Eddie Foreman. Mm -hmm. uh, Eddie Foreman's alive. Yeah, that's right, Eddie. Yeah. John, I mean, Dennis Huckowitz. As my kids say, Mr. Foreman. Yeah. So it's we'll my motion. I'll second it. Any more discussion? Dedicating these reports is all kind of new to me, so I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, it's. It seems like there should be a better, better way, although how how you come up with one, you know. know there's so many people who do things oh, that's how it nice. works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if people don't do Sorry. things, it's mm -hmm. took us 362 mm -hmm. years to do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I think we should leave Howard Kosky and Dan and Kevin's on top of the list for next year for whoever is sitting on the board. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Do you want to talk about it some more? I, I mean, I don't know. Now, now I'm kind of leaning towards all of them. All of them. Yeah. This, <coughs> this kind of concept. You've done it in 2013 if you dedicated it to four people um, and, uh, and gave a Fred Oakley Award. It's a motion and second on the floor, Chair. We're still discussing your motion in a second. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I thought it was being amended. No. You guys want a quarter over there to flip or what? No, I mean, I, I, we kind of like David's suggestion to, to not let anybody uh, drop off. Drop off. Since, yeah. since the nomination uh, came after the fact of uh, uh, what we well, were we talked about what we were going to take under consideration mm -hmm. um, then I would just suggest uh, making amendment to the motion not received motion and second on the floor chair vote or not any more discussion <laughs> on it all those in favor of the motion aye aye motion aye. fails all those against the motion aye aye I'm, I'm, I, I, being the new guy, it's kind of hard to make that choice. So it's just not really Most fails. Making a motion. I, I mean, there's a lot of years of service. Like procedure, procedure. I, I, I think they're all important. That's yeah. That's how I feel. So yeah. I'm I'm going with the um, other suggestion of uh, of all. So is there a motion? All, all three. I'll make a motion that. Uh, well, wait a minute. Did you vote yet? I abstained. Oh. Two two. So oh, did. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. So we did. So I'll make a motion to have the dedication of the book to um, Howard, Dan, Dan, and Connie, and then the Fred Oakley Award to Irene and um, Helen. And I'll second that motion. Any more discussion about it? No. No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Well, we all agree. We agreed. agreed. <laughs> you shed yourself for your abstention. Uh, I, I don't yeah. think we're, we're running out of books for next year. I just so, don't think. I mean, there's so many people who do things, though. I mean, there's, if we, there's always more. It's, it's so great. I mean, it's the one thing about cool about this town is everybody gets involved and does things and want to be involved and wants to do things. Yeah. But then it makes it hard when we want to award people things. But don't stop doing things, people. Keep helping us out. Bridge. You too could be right. <laughs> Bridge update, please. Okay, so the uh, Mass DOT started working on the bridge. Uh, they've uh, closed it down to one lane. They've re reduced the weight to three tons. They've installed the traffic advisory signs and signalization. This is the bridge over Fort River on Bay Road. 
Uh, we've been working with MassDOT in order to uh, provide emergency services, uh, snow plowing, bus routes, uh, and uh, trying to make the, uh, the detour as uh, livable as possible. To try to protect uh, Looney Bridge Road and the residents there from excessive traffic impact. Uh, we've worked with our uh, um, mutual aid uh, providers uh, as well as PBTA and some of the surrounding communities that provide emergency services, particularly ambulance uh, along Bay Road. So, you know, it's a difficult situation. We're making the best of it. Um, Mass DOT has to wait till low water conditions before they start uh, repairing the supports. So this is going to be a summer project. Uh, so we'll have this uh, situation for the next six months. If there's any issues that arise, we know that we can get in touch with the Mass DOT and that they'll be responsive to that. Uh, Mr. Devine was talking to me about some ideas about how to alleviate some of the weight restriction. We will certainly explore those with uh, Mass DOT and see what Yeah, we I, I would definitely like an answer to the, why they put the Jersey barriers on the bridge rather than lightweight barrels or cones or, or some other kind of traffic solution ra rather than putting all that weight on the bridge. That's a good I mean, question. That's and a, then limit that, the amount of vehicles that can You know, they, right. they could raise raise the tunnel limit if they took the Jersey barriers off for sure. Well, there's no doubt in my mind about that. Right. Although, <clears throat> you know, they're worried about an ambulance. And, it's and the state. Well, I understand that, but I, I think it needs to be addressed. Well, I do too. I'm just saying it's the state's rules. That's what well, I'm saying sarcastically. You need to be careful about bridges in New England because you actually get the most corrosion on the outside girders. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the outside girders are the worst and then comes in. So even though the pilings may be bad, the girders may have an issue too. And, and the point may be with not putting cones and barrels on it is that they don't want people driving on those outside girders. Mm -hmm. So that they, might be their answer. Yeah, but they've got, they've got the Jersey barriers set up on both sides of the bridge, which th those can stay because they're not carrying any. You know, they're, they're not, they're not, not on the carrying bridge. load. They're not on a bridge. It's the actual Jersey barriers on the bridge that they have probably I don't know how many tons of Jersey barriers sitting on the there's bridge. 32 so bri there's 32 bridge. There's 32 Jersey barriers on the bridge. Yeah, they weigh 4,600 and 70 tons of 70 pounds apiece. Yeah, can so, we get the civil so engineers resolve this? We need. We should ask the question. But yeah. I think that's yeah. 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 Gonna ask. yeah, we'll we'll ask the question. We'll follow up, and uh, you know, obviously, we want to work with uh, uh, Mass DOT so that we preserve public safety, but we also want to reduce the inconvenience to the uh, motorists as well. So do we have a executive session thing? Yes, we have mm -hmm. two very quick items of business. We can take care of it in a jiffy. All right, so do we have any announcements? I'd like to congratulate the basketball team to go 20-0. and 0. Boys basketball team won the game the other night. A little bit close on that one, but made it anyways, and they're on the tournament. Congratulations, guys. Girls are on the tournament also. I got a comment about our public uh, comment section there. <laughs> if, if the accusation was true for the uh, finance committee, I'd like a little research done on it and some answers on that also. Yeah, we'll look into that. Oh, never mind. I'm not even getting into it tonight because I could. Go ahead. Go. Molly. Yep. Um, and then we did uh, sign the Commonwealth Community Compact at a ceremony, and we received this lovely portfolio to commemorate the event. So I'm looking Very forward nice. to implementation and the exploration of best practices. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Congratulations. Okay, yeah. any other announcements? Isn't there a tournament this weekend? Oh, Cornhole tournament? There was a oh, yeah. Cornhole Time tournament at the uh, grammar school on Sunday starting at 10 o'clock. Double elimination. I understand there's 34 teams that are signed up for it. Everybody come and enjoy it. There's also going to be a raffle t ticket there, as raffle table there as well. Come to work with me. 34. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. All right. Uh, I make a motion to go into executive session for discussion of contract negotiations 
uh, will not reconvene in open session. I as chair. Is there a second? Jump in the gun there. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? Yes. Second. second. Okay. All right. As the chair of the highly select board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into an executive session, and I state that the discussion of, this, of the matter in open session would have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley. We will not reconvene, so good night, everybody. Good night. Right. Roll call. Roll call vote. Muskevitz? Yes. Devine? Yes. Maureen? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Keegan? Yes. All right.